The story is about the time before 2017, when the situation was still better than the after. I'm 29 years old. Uyghur. I got married in Egypt five years ago, and I gave birth to healthy triplets, and we were all living happily together. In 2015, I flew to my hometown with my triplets to see my parents, but as soon as I arrived at Urumqi Airport, I was handcuffed and put a dark sack over my head. My triplets were separated from me. I had no idea what I had done wrong. Of course, I didn't commit any crime. The authorities repeatedly interrogated and tortured me by electric shock. One day, I got paroled and was told my children were sick. I could only see them through a glass window at the hospital. But the next day, they gave me a dead body of my son. It was my oldest son, who was born biggest among the triplets. All three babies had been operated on their neck area. I was told it was to feed them through a tube on their neck, but no more details other than that. After that, I went back to my home in Churchin County and started working, but soon I got a call from the authorities. We will put you on the wanted list if you don't turn yourself in. I had no choice but to go to the police station. That was the second time I got detained. Why did you go abroad? Tell us who you met there. I was interrogated for three days and nights without sleep and I was repeatedly beaten up by several polices. It was too hard to bear the torture and I muttered, Allah, accidentally. Then they told me, if Allah has more power than we do, try to come to save you. Kill me, right now. We will not let you die that easily. I kept thinking how to commit suicide. I could not take any action because of surveillances. In the cell, the lights were always on for 24 hours, and there were cameras on all four corners to watch us. More than 50 people were kept in there, so there was not enough room to rest, and we had to take turns to sleep every two hours. During daytime, we had to pray for the chairman of the Communist Chinese Party to live long, and sing songs hailing the communism. They forced us to take different kinds of unknown pills, and have injections every single day. After the injection, the sight got swollen and made me feel weak for a week and caused occasional memory loss. A few people were constantly brought outside of the cell, but at the same, new people will be added too. We could hear the beatings, the men screaming, and people being dragged around from other cells. There was a woman who died after bleeding for over a month. I was sent to a mental hospital after I lost consciousness from the beatings. I could go back to my home, but two staffs followed right behind me. They stayed at my place, ate our foods, and followed me every time I went out. So that is why I could not speak any truths, even to my parents. Not after a while, I was detained for the third time. I was dressed in an orange prison uniform and told, You are imprisoned for life or death. Be prepared. Then the police told me, Write a letter to your husband and children, because you will die soon. We will send the letter to them, so tell us where they live. My children hold Egyptian citizenship, so the Egyptian government found the fact that my children and their father were not together and asked the authorities about the reason. So the authorities allowed me to take my children to Egypt. But they detained 26 of my relatives and told me, if you return to China within two months, we will release your relatives. What is the reason I had to face so many hardships for the past three years? It is because you are Uyghur. As soon as I arrived at Egypt, I found my husband had been missing. From his colleague, I learned that he returned to Xinjiang to look for me and got detained at the airport and sentenced to 16 years in prison. While my stay in Egypt, the authorities called me many times we will not detain you and promise to give you a job that suits your career, so come back to China. All the communication with my relatives were seized. My children and I got harassed even when we were in Egypt. Eventually, Uyghur in Egypt started getting deported. So I sought help from the United States. The US government assured our safety and promised to protect us. We currently live in the United States due to the US government. But even in the States, we got harassments like having the doorbell rung at midnight, stalked in a grocery store, and chased around in a car by Chinese people. Because of all the harassments, we had to move three times in the States. 
When I was examined at the hospital, my doctor told me, you cannot get pregnant. Drugs and injections taken in the camp seem to prevent pregnancy. My oldest son who passed away will not come back no matter what. So, I gathered my courage and decided to tell the world what had happened to me. My name is Mehrigul Tursun. Please, please know more about Uyghur. I hope my story will reach to as many people as possible and can help more Uyghur around the world.